Today we're gonna go over the brand new Pokemon Unite tier list after the Body Bearer and Scorch Show nerf in the game. It's gonna be awesome. Let's get started. Hey, you guys, how's everyone doing? This is your guy, Assassin Dave. Welcome back to Team Foreign Famous Family again, and welcome to the post era update with Body Bearer nerf, with Scorch Show nerf, and all the kind of great stuff. I gotta say, the meta has completely shifted 180 degree. A lot of strategies are no longer viable. I call them the cringe strategies, including the scoring strategy, including the Body Bearer flipping Zapdos strategy, you can lose all game, just unite on Zap and then get the Zapdos and go score. All the kind of great stuff are gone. Now we're coming to a brand new Pokemon Unite that's actually interesting, that's actually quite balanced. A lot of Pokemon now can be presented in the game when they never had the opportunity. So without further ado guys, today we're gonna cover all of those changes and how they shift the meta. Best Pokemons you can use to rank up one class by another. So get your popcorn, get your soda, you're in for a treat. Now we're gonna start this categorization with different classes. We're gonna start with all rounder first. Now, speaking of all rounder, let's first talk about Aegislash. Aegislash has gotten a huge buff. I would say this Pokemon right now is definitely A tier in the all rounder category. This Pokemon is just really, really good. You can go in with your triangle slash and just swa 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 and KO everybody and your Unite move actually does quite a bit of damage on securing objectives. And on top of it, after level seven, you learn the big shield, the great shield. You have to become quite tanky and you're invulnerable to quad control while you're using that shield. So overall, Aegislash is is a really, really good Pokemon. Now, talking about a Zoom Rail, I would start off with a D tier. I mean, that would say D. I would put a C, but definitely the worst all rounder in the game right now. The only thing good about this Pokemon is the Unite move. Nothing else is really good about it. Like, talking about damage wise, he doesn't out damage a Garchomp one by one. When you look at a Pokemon that's passive, it's built around one and one somebody. Like, if you want to want a single target and there's no one else around, you should do a lot of damage, but a Zoom Rail doesn't really offer that right now. The damage just feels low. The stats just feels low. I like the design of the Pokemon, but hopefully we're going to get a zoom roll buff soon in the future. Now, when we talk about Charizard, the thing about Charizard is, yes, Charizard can team fight really well, but right now with so much invulnerability, it's actually quite hard for Charizard to get a Unite off. Still, just like the last patch when we talk about how Charizard is not so viable, it's mainly because two reasons. Number one, you can't get your Unite off because of all this inv invulnerability, and Charizard's really only good when you get your Unite off in the team fight, right? If you don't get your Unite off, you're kind of screwed. And when you get your Unite off, you have to get your Unite off in the right time, attack the right target. If you just get your Unite off, off and then like in the beginning of the fight, yeah, you can get it off, you know, catch people off guard. But what would happen is enemy will be full HP and if you start healing each other, let's say enemy had a Blissey or Eldegoss, you might waste your Unite completely. So Charizard, I would say putting a B tier is not the best, but it's definitely okay. The second problem with Charizard is obviously Charizard is only good for team fight. It doesn't have any objective secure. You can't even rip. Like when I say rip, I mean like do objective really fast, right? Shred the HP off of the objective. Sim similar to like Cinderace or Greninja, they can do objective really, really fast. But Charizard can't. Charizard only does damage when you have skill one and skill two ready. It does a lot of damage. You can do it pretty fast when you have the skill available. But if you don't have those available or if you use that skill to do an objective, guess what? You don't have any other skill to do damage if enemies want to come and try to bully you while you're doing objective. So overall, I will give Charizard a B tier. Lucario, sadly, that I have to inform you guys, Lucario went from a lower tier now back to the S plus tier, the S tier. The reason for that is without body barrier, Lucario never got a nerf. So now the E speed will truly one shot you even late game because you don't really have Body Bear there to protect you, right? Body Bear got nerfed. So if Lucario got an E-Speed on you, it's really hard to protect against it. I think the only best way is if you have some some kind of harsh CC, hard quad control, like Slow Bros Unite, or you can constantly interrupt his uh, dive or combo with really tough or all that. But that's more of a teamwork than like, you know, what you can do a singular player. So it just feels kind of weird. And then the Lucario is so suppressive at level five, at the first set of beasts, at level seven, the second set of beasts, no other Pokemon comes close to Lucario. So it just feels weird that this Pokemon is so strong. I feel like they should really nerf the E-Speed damage. Just make it where instead of doing two E-Speed to declare the entire beast, make it four, you know? Give other people opportunity to do something. Instead of two shots of a hyper carry early game with E-Speed, make it like five or something. Like make the damage reduce. Make it where when you use E-Speed with all attack, you cannot crit, right? You guarantee cannot crit. You can do a combo damage, but you cannot crit. Something like that. Cause sometimes when Lucario crits, it's just like, ugh. Like why am I playing this game? All right, now we'll look at Dragonite. Dragonite, I think without Body Bear is actually quite nice now. Now. It's definitely eight here, and, and I would argue it's ahead of Aegislash. Slash. The reason being is Dragonite actually does a decent amount of damage. The only problem with Dragonite is range. Like compared to all the other hyper carries, Dragonite doesn't really attack really far. In fact, you can't even hit Zapdos outside of the wall. You can only hit Zapdos like on the vertical top at that point of the wall. If you're outside of that piece, you can probably all attack the Zapdos. But other than that, you have to get in the pit so you can all attack the Zapdos. So the all attack range is way too short compared to any other hyper carries like Decidueye, like Cinderace, like Greninja. All of those Pokemon, they can all attack. 
Dragon Zapdos outside of wall, but Dragonite can. So I would give him A tier because he does have a superior secure. They have a lot of escape, a lot of mobility. Just early game farming feels kind of weak. I don't know why, but it does feel really, really slow. Let's take a look at Garchomp. Garchomp, I would say, is definitely B tier, and I would say it's better than Charizard. Garchomp is also really good at team fight Pokemon. The only problem with Garchomp is also secure, right? Garchomp doesn't really secure really well, and it's a melee Pokemon compared to Charizard. In fact, I think they're the same. It doesn't really matter who's ahead or who's first. Uh, Garchomp never has a Unite problem. You can you can just Unite whenever you want, right? Because it's a you know, activation skill, or Charizard, you have to use it on enemy. Or Garchomp, you just like unite and you become invincible and you kill everybody. I mean, no, KO everybody, knock out everybody. And Garchomp's damage is through the roof, right? You can actually just go in with your combo and just all attacks. It feels so strong in the meta with, without Body Bear's protection. So I would give body, uh, Garchomp a B plus tier. Now let's take a look at Machamp. Machamp in the meta is also really good because again, there's no Body Bear. So if Machamp dives, it does dive really, really strongly. It feels really powerful when Machamp dies. So I would just give him a champ, again, above Charizard. I just don't feel like Charizard's that good right now. It just feels kind of weak. The only Unite, by the way, if you look at all this right here, right? The only Unite that can be canceled among everything we just talked about in the all-rounder category is Charizard. And it can be canceled very, very often. And guess what? When your Unite get canceled, you're like the most useless Pokemon in the entire game. Charizard's auto attack without passive, without skill one applied onto the enemy is literally negative damage. You know, you do like two digit damage, level 15 Charizard. Like that's how much damage you do with your auto attack. So it's kind of weak. Serena, Serena is actually so underrated. The team fight potential for Serena is really, really strong. And the Serena gets level six. Serena become the strongest Pokemon in the game. The biggest problem for Serena is similar to Charizard right here. Serena's Unite can be canceled, but different from Charizard. If Serena Unite get canceled, you still get this huge movement speed buff. You still get this huge everything that the Unite is supposed to give you, right? And then obviously you don't rely on Unite to do damage. Your Unite can lock someone down. It does a lot of damage for sure. But if you don't get it off, it doesn't matter. You get the bonuses. You can still use your skill one, skill two combo to do damage. And that's where Serena damage comes from. So I will give Serena like a high B tier because this all this Pokemon in B tier does not have any secures. If you look at all Dragonite, you look at Aegislash, they have secure. And by the way, Lucario have a lot of secure as well. When we say secure, I mean high damage single skill burst, right? So for example, Lucario's Unite move. If you do not pay attention, this Unite move actually does 4,000 damage. I mean 3,800, I think around that point. If you use the close combat to a singular target, to Zapdos and all that. So that's why when you play in Greninja and you walk into the bush, and there's Lucario hiding there. Even if you're a higher level than the Lucario, the Lucario, if you unite it, when you're walking into the bush, he can one-shot 95% of your health, 90% of your health. Greninja only has about 4,700 HP. So if he does one skill, that's 4,000 of your health, like you're done, you know, one E speed. Just basically one unite, one E speed, you're done. That's literally how it works with Lucario. This Pokemon is way too busted, and I'm so glad that we are not getting a nerf on it. I, I think Lucario needs another buff. I'm just kidding, bro. I don't understand why Lucario is not nerfed. This Pokemon should be right here. They should give Lucario evolution. They should nerf the damage to the ground. This Pokemon has been sit at the crown seat for way too long. I think it should just be gutted to give other Pokemon a chance, right? To give Aegislash top, to let Garchomp top, Machim top, all this Serena top, all this Pokemon should be given a chance. Today's video is brought to you by Ram Magic 7, the best gaming phone for 2022. My personal gaming phone for every single mobile game I play, every single Pokemon Unite game that I pilot. That is correct. This boy is equipped with a brand new flagship chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And look at this beautiful 6.8 inches AMOLED display right here. This display is equipped with 165 hertz refresh rate and 720 hertz multi-touch sampling rate. Doesn't matter how sophisticated your game is, how fast your control, your mechanics are, Ram Magic 7 got you covered. Now my personal favorite feature gotta be Look at this bad boy right here. You see this? This is RGB cooling fan that's part of the ICE 8.0 cooling technology. With a 4500 milliamp battery, you can play whatever game for however long you want. And the best part is this phone never gets hot. One of my personal favorite feature is you can swipe and you can turn on the charge separation because I stream my games and I like to record my gameplays and I like to charge my phone while I play game because I play long hour of gaming. With charging separation, your phone runs directly from the cable. It doesn't run the juice from the battery. That means it reduces heat even further. And that's absolutely insane. I absolutely love it. Make sure to get yours with the link in description today or check them out with the link in description right now. For $620 only, you can take this bad boy home and take your gaming experience to the next level. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with Arunder out of the way, let's talk about attackers. Kremlin is an interesting Pokemon 
Pokemon. Cramorant right now with a recent buff on Air Slash, it feels like the damage is really, really good. But is Cramorant an absolute A tier? I think so. I think so. Like even if you don't go jungle Cramorant, most the most popular Cramorant playstyle is still Surf and Hurricane, the silent attacker, right? You throw skills similar to Pikachu. But right now with a buff on the, the Unite move where you get Unite a lot faster, I think Cramorant is just pretty decent right now. So I'll put Cramorant in the A tier in the attacker. Now Center Race, similar to be honest. In fact, I think Powerball is back in the meta now. I was playing with my friend Fui and he was recommending me to do Powerball in solo queue. And I tried it. I feel like the damage is actually quite decent, especially after you get to level 13 and above. It does feel like you're making it impact with Pyroball. Now, my favorite build is still Blaze Kick because it does make you go crazy mode. It's just that right now, a lot of people have dive. So if you have some kind of poke with Pyroball, it does feel really, really strong. But I will put Cinderace ahead of Cremorant in the center area. Now, Decidueye. Decidueye is very interesting now. Without any protection or any of that, like Decidueye used to be really good because he was all poking at me because of your arrows. And he forced me to use Unite and then come back and do it again. But right now, no one really have Body Bearer. So what happened is they will just come in and straight up dive you. And a lot of times when they recognize you as a good Decidueye player, they will full OD you, means overdose you. Like just completely use everything on you, like look for you across the map, and you can't really survive because without Body Bearer now, Speedster are getting really popular, Arunder are getting really popular, and guess who they're gonna look for in the middle of the team fight? It's usually gonna be the squishiest target in the game, and that's you. So with that being said, I will put Decidueye at a B tier now because of the lack of self-protection, right? Compared to any other hyper carry, Cinder Race has self-protection with the Flame Charge, with the Feint, no matter what you learn. You look at Greninja, right? Greninja has self-protection, right? Greninja with a Surf with a double team, the smoke screen with everything that Greninja has. Greninja has a lot of self protection, whereas this person just doesn't. This Cidre just does not. So I'll put this right at B tier. It still does a lot of damage. It just doesn't have any self protection and it get too easily dove on a meta, which is not something I like. Now Greninja, I'll put at a high A tier, head of Kremlin, because Greninja is probably one of the best Pokemon in the game right now. You can go in, you can go out, you can come out. You can use your Unite move to dive onto the enemy backlines. You have a lot of mobility. You have a high burst damage with the Surf. You can play like a Marksman with your double team and a Water Shuriken. There's just a lot of different playstyle with Greninja, this Pokemon is just really, really versatile. You know, you can go to the back line or you can stay in the front line and you can secure objectives. It has execution, it has consistent damage all at the same time. Duradon is an interesting Pokemon. Duradon after a nerf on Dragon Pulse, it used to be like the best secure in the entire game. But after the nerf on Dragon Pulse, people stopped using it. But in my personal opinion, the cannon build Duradon is just as good, if not better, than a lot of casters. And your ultimate move, your Unite move is so strong, it's so game changing. Create a big circle, give yourself an incredible large as shield that makes you unkillable plus some help with the teammates let's say you get a blissey you get an outer goss you become unkillable in the circle and you just murder everybody just kill everybody so i think duradon should deserve a higher seat than a lot of people would think but not as high as obvious cinder base and the greninja so i'll put duradon on a b tier now let's go with gardevoir gardevoir has a similar problem with decidueye the poke is there the damage is there the high burst is there the problem is self peel we mentioned about like how lucaro how suppressive this pokemon is it requires no skill at all right he just e speed in and you're dead. Like this Pokemon, by the way, full heal is only 40 second cooldown. He can just jump in, E speed, E speed, E speed, full heal, right? E speed, E speed, E speed. And Gardevoir cannot do anything. If this guy E speed and then run towards you, it takes him like two to three E speed, full kill, 100 to zero Gardevoir. And on top of it, he can full heal, which means he's unstoppable. There's nothing you can do to stop this character. It just make the game very balanced, tilted against Gardevoir. Squishy, long range casters, right? People who rely on accuracy and good positioning. But if your good positioning is always punished by the game, Game mechanic by the game design of how imbalanced the Lucario is. It feels weak, you know, it just feels really weak. God of War against Lucario, you have to learn Moonblast. I personally like Psychic, it does allow you to amplify your damage. So it just feels really weird. I'm gonna put a God of War in the B tier as well. Now look at Pikachu. Pikachu is well deserved A tier. This Pokemon bulk damage is just way too insane. The Unite move is the shortest in the game, 89 seconds. You can use it at any time, like once per minute, without too much farm at all. Right? Even if you don't use, don't farm at all, it's like 90 seconds you know, cooldown. So you can use like one time and go top lane, farm some. You don't need to farm it. Actually, you're gonna get your Unite back a minute and a half later. So it's so, so fast. It's so, so good. Good job being the face of the Pokemon, right? So that's why I guess they made uh, Pikachu so strong. Sylveon still needs a buff, to be honest. I will have to put Sylveon in the C tier. Obviously ahead of Azumarill, but Sylveon is not the greatest in the game. Heavily relies on level four to be impactful. But if you go Sylveon in the side lane, it's almost really hard to get Sylveon level four, right? You you just kind of hard stuck level three over there. Try to use your skill one, skill two to secure something. Where enemy have some Cramorant, so have some Pikachu. They have a Blissey and they can steal everything from you. So Sylvia, I'll put a C tier. Now, Ninetales. Ninetales, I'll put an A tier. The caster build is an incredible use. It's really satisfying. You want to shot somebody with Blizzard and uh, Avalon. 
damage. But the stronger build in the meta is still the Aurora Veil. The Aurora Veil just give you way too much damage reduction and it just makes you attack like crazy, like a mad fox. So I will put Ninetale right here because this Pokemon is so good in the meta. Considering there's no Body Bearer and you have Aurora Veil to give you damage reduction, which allows you to stay in a team fight. Not only you, your teammates, if they stand in the circle of the Aurora Veil, they all get the benefit of the damage reduction. So overall, I will give Ninetale the A tier. Alrighty, let's talk about Venusaur. Venusaur is the Pokemon. It's also an attacker and it's also one of those hyper carries. When you get a level 13, level 14, level 15 Venusaur, you are definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with. Venusaur has a lot of lifesteal, has a lot of sustain, and if you combo that with the right Pokemons in your team, like Blissey and all that, it's really, really insane. So I would have put a Venusaur somewhere in the high A tier, let's say above the Cremorant. Yeah, but definitely not ahead of the Pikachu. I think Venusaur is really, really good if you have some combos to it. Again, there's no Body Bear, so right now if you throw a Unite move onto the enemy team, you're not gonna get that much of a shield. And if you don't position well with your Giga Drain and a Petal Dance, you might get one shot it. You might actually just get completely knocked out and fainted out of the park. So I think that Venusaur is good, but you need to be played with caution. Let's talk about Defender Roll. The Defender Roll is quite interesting because I don't think a lot of the Pokemon's categorization is correct. For example, how would you say Blastoise is a Defender? I mean, it's kind of like a Defender, but most people play Blastoise not as a Defender. They play Blastoise more of a carry, right? It Defender, it feels like in Pokemon Unite, is more of a name that just categorize like the class. Oh, it looks kind of tanky. It looks kind of bulky. So it's Defender, but they don't serve a Defender role. Whereas in any other MOBA, Defender as a name is mainly called as like a frontline tank. Somebody who's going to be there to absorb damage and then initiate a team fight. Start out a team fight with big uh, crawl controls and initiations. And yeah, you can run Surf on Blastoise, but the problem with Blastoise is your power spike comes so late. Your early game is absolutely disgusting. It's not really that strong. And if you go in and you, you get just one shot at because how weak you are, you don't really trade all attack, it feels this Pokemon is kind of weak. So I'm just saying that a lot of Pokemon doesn't really feel like a defender. Again, Crossel, right? Crossel does feel kind of bulky, but the Pokemon playstyle is just really weird. People mainly use Crossel to score, don't really do any team fight with it. I feel like right now with the score show nerf, we might see more of a Crossel in the team fight, you know, with a cross shot, pa pa pa, running in uh, with the, uh, you know, X speed and just start running in your face and unite you and push you back. So I look forward to see the playstyle changes on Crossel. I will give Blastoise a tier right now. The Pokemon is just really, really strong in the meta. It really stands out, right? Because this Pokemon right now on Defender Roll, it's just an extra carry, right? You can use Blastoise to dive into the enemy's squishy backline because they don't have body bearers and straight up one shot them with Water Spout and a Rapid Spin combo. Really strong Pokemon. Definitely with a new Battle Pass, Holo World 2, this Pokemon feels stronger than ever. Crossel feels weak. It feels really weird. It, it doesn't feel right to me. The playstyle, the early game evolution feels weird. Uh, Pre-level 4, you're just like a booty. I don't really do anything. I'll put Crossel in D tier. You know what? I'll put Azumarill in D tier along with Crossel. I feel like they're just equally weak. Now we talk about Greedent. Greedent got nerfed. Yes. But is Greedent OP? Yes. Absolutely. Right? This Pokemon is still invincible when you're using Covet. The only one skill that can stop you, which is Slow Bros Unite, any other skills only slows you down a tiny bit. It's not that much. This Pokemon is still really, really good. You can go in and steal stuff with your Belch. It's just, again, early game evolution, it's just kind of criminal. But what is not criminal compared to Lucario, right? This Pokemon does not require evolution and it's strongest Pokemon in the game. It's just, uh, it's disgusting how the developer not nerfing this Pokemon after so many months. Like, how much do you have to love Lucario to not recognize how OP this Pokemon is? It's only getting picked 100% in any tournament except for our team. We're the only team that doesn't run Lucario because our player hates it. All right, let's do Slowbro. Slowbro, still really powerful Pokemon. The thing about this Pokemon is it has a triple surf at level 11. It has quite a bit of quad control. The Unite move is really impactful, but you only get to use that twice per game, which is not the best, you know, because imagine if you go to the Zapdos fight, you made a mistake and you have to use your Unite. You're kind of screwed, right? You're literally kind of screwed. You use your Unite move, you're not really killing anybody, your teammates cannot follow up. It just feels like Slowbro, you're wasting the Unite move, right? So like overall, I'll put Slowbro in the B tier because compared to the other defenders or who are people who are played in this position, like Willy Top and all that kind of stuff. Willy Top has double quad control all the time. You know, his passive, the Q Charm, the Sing, Dazzling Gleam, triple quad control, and then Willy Top Unite move is really impactful no matter when you use it, right? No matter how you use it. You can dive in and then when you're low, your teammates can dive in and can just unite everybody and people become invincible and just dive completely commit to the enemy team. So it feels like Slowbro is strong, it's impactful, but the cooldown is way too long for the Unite move to, to make this Pokemon worth it, to be honest. I think they need to buff Slowbro tremendously and then just have uh, Slowbro able to use at least three Unites per game instead of two. Or like make other skills cooldown a lot shorter where Slowbro can be more impact. Snorlax, overall, Snorlax feel kind of clumsy in the meta. Without the Body Bearer, Snorlax right now like can be easily poked out 
like by enemy team. Now you have to use your Unite move to regenerate HP, but after that, you're gonna keep on getting poked out. Personally, I think it's better than the slow bro because you can actually go in and do a lot of a lot of bit of qual control, but it feels kind of weak in a sense of there's no body bear anymore, so your tankiness get cut, and other people can just out poke you from really really far away. So I'll say Snorlax is in the B tier because it does get out poked, out zoned by Wigglytuff, and it get out damaged by a lot of other defenders too. It get out qual controlled by a lot of Pokemon too, like Mammal Swine. Trevenant is definitely an A tier defender. In fact, I will think Trevenant is better than all these Pokemon. This Pokemon right now is a definition of unkillable. You cannot kill a Trevenant. It's impossible. The Pokemon is way too tanky for you to do it. It feels just literally impossible. He goes in, he has his passive ready that generates HP. On top of it, most Trevenant player takes Focus Band. And on top of it, most Trevenant player takes Body Bear. And it just makes you completely unkillable. And on top of that, your skills mechanic gives you regeneration. I think Trevenant as a Pokemon is just the best in the mana right now. A defender role. It does just offer so much if you're able to get some lead. So I like personally Trevenant. I think Trevenant should be played more. This Pokemon CC is through the roof. The damage is through the roof. That will give Trevenant a high A tier. Memo Swine, I'll put it in a B tier. The thing about Memo Swine is Unite Move is not impactful at all. Unite Move is okay. It does damage. It jump in and it has a tiny knockup in the end. But it's not as impactful as something like, let's say, Slow Bro. It's not as impactful as even a Snorlax heal because Snorlax can go in and just completely become a me shield where if Memo Swine get chunked down, you're getting chunked down. Your Unite Move doesn't really help you surviving, right? Maybe give you a tiny movement speed boost, maybe give you a tiny bit of knock up, maybe give you a tiny bit of buddy bearer, but it doesn't feel that powerful. So I'll put Mammal Swine in a B tier, but I will put it ahead of Slow Bro, to be honest. Okay, let's talk about Speedsters. Speedster class are probably the most beneficial of the car meta because of the lack of body bearer. So you can actually go in the new backline and one shot somebody. And the talking about one shot, that one of the best Pokemon to do that is obviously gonna be Absol. A lot of people are sleeping on this Pokemon, especially my team. Unless they see the coffin, they don't really believe it. I don't know why. Right now, Absol is actually so good, you know? I can't believe this Pokemon is not being played more. I think it should be played top lane to contest Lucario because it doesn't have evolution either. The one shot potential is insane. The team fight potential is insane. The cooldown on your sucker punch on all the skills that you will use are insane. It's really, really short. You can use them over and over again. There are very little downtime for Absol. So let's talk about Gengar. Gengar is similar. Gengar right now, you can one shot any squishy backline almost without fail. If you use your Unite at the right time and you go in with your one, two, three, sorry, two, one, two, three combo, right? Basically throw your Dream Eater onto the target to put them to sleep. And then you do your one, two, three combo, right? One, two, three means like your uh, Shadow Ball, Dream Eater, part two, and your Unite move. You can one shot literally any squishy targets. In fact, most squishy targets like Decidueye, like Cinderace, you don't need to do your full combo. You just need to land a Dream Eater and a skill one, two, and then they're most likely gonna faint straight up. Like, oh! It just go to sleep. Tail and Fame feels not as strong as before now because of the nerf, but Tail and Fame nonetheless still feels really strong. So, because Unite Move is shortest, it's a Pikachu level, right? So, I will put Tail and Fame still in the A tier. All the speed starts is really good. Tail and Fame, the same thing. It doesn't one shot targets as well as Ingar and obviously Absol, but a big lag up compared to the two other speedsters is this guy does have a lot of secure, number one. Number two is he's really, really mobile. Number three is Unite Move timer. It's really short. Zero Aura, unfortunately, I would still have to put in B tier. I thought Zero Aura is good. Good. I tried it. I mean, Solo Q is actually really good. But in Feynman, the biggest downside that determined the fate of this Pokemon is that Zero Aura is the only Pokemon in the game right now that has level 10 Unite. If Zero Aura's Unite move and every single skill evolution got moved up a level, let's say you can learn your Wall Switch or your Sparkle at uh, level 5 instead of level 6. Let's say you can learn your Wall Charge at level 7 instead of level 8. Let's say you can learn your Unite at level 9 instead of level 10. Zero Aura will definitely be meta. But right now, this Pokemon, Power Spike is too late. A lot of time I will get level 9 at Zapdos. Enemy level 9 has a Unite move. It's game changing. My level 9, it's just level 9. With that out of the way, let's talk about the last and the foremost, the support role. Blissey is definitely A tier right now. This Pokemon is just through the roof. There's so much crawl control we talked about, and this Blissey can cancel all the crawl control on command with a safeguard. You throw the safeguard onto the allied teammates, you both get immunity to crawl control. On top of that, the shield that Blissey offers with that is actually insanely strong. You also have egg bombs right now. I don't know what happens to it, but it does. It just feels like it do so much damage, and the crawl control is pretty nice with it. Talking about Unite move, oh, Unite move is too strong. So overall, guys, I like this Pokemon quite a bit. I think Blissey is really, really nice. I think this Pokemon that should be played a lot more in ranked, and I think it's probably rank one defender. It's actually a support role that goes in, soak up the damage, and it offers a lot, lot of attributes to the team. Autogast, I'll put in B tier. The, the biggest problem with Autogast is the lack of crawl control. Yes, your Unite move, yes, there is a one little skill that you can evolve into that give you crawl control, but even that crawl control is delayed, and people can easily dodge it. Mr. Mime, put it at 
and B tier. Because Mr. Mime damage, even though it got nerfed, is still really good. But the damage has conditions to it, right? Like Mr. Mime is not really tanky. Even though it's a melee range Pokemon, but if Mr. Mime walks up, he will get heavily punished by someone like Wigglytuff. And also on top of it, Mr. Mime just gets straight up canceled or countered by Blissey, right? If Mr. Mime tried to poke somebody and if Blissey just give that person a safeguard, you're done. On top of that, if you continue to commit with Mr. Mime, Blissey can just full counter you, right? With, for example, with safeguard, with Unite move. Mr. Mime is good, but I think it's a B tier Pokemon. Now let's talk about Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff is still an A tier Pokemon. This Pokemon is still way too strong. The Unite move offers immunity to the, immunity to the entire team. The early game quad control is insane. A special damage reduction from Wigglytuff is too good to pass off. So I would just say Wigglytuff is A tier. Somewhere around Blissey. Blissey just safeguard everybody. So Koopa now, I'll put in S tier. Koopa is just way too strong of a support not to pick up. Any team plays it. It has macro uh, implications with the Unite move, right? And also can full OD somebody. If you play Hoopa and then use your Unite move as Zapdos fight, you can literally run down enemy attacker without enemy being able to do anything. And if they full waste their Unite to counter you, then well, it's a waste because when you're in unbound form, you have the highest amount of HP in the entire game. You're literally a defender that does attacker damage with muscle band. So it just feels like it's way too strong at level 11, right? Teleportation, regeneration, the utility offer, summoning your entire team to the back line and score. Everything about this Pokemon is just got here. So that's going to be my tier list in the current meta. What do y'all think, guys? Do you guys agree with this tier list? Do you not agree? Make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out another one with a thumbnail right here. You don't come to zap. You don't even score after I got the zap. That's why you're dumbass. Just the way you are.